The nature of light has been a topic that has occupied the minds and conversations of physicists for hundreds of years. Classical physics had reigned supreme in this discussion until inconsistencies detected between the analysis of experimental data and theoretical predictions led physicists to shift their attention to the quantum realm. One of the first steps into this strange yet exciting territory was initiated in 1901, when theoretical physicist Max Planck solved what was dramatically denoted as the ultraviolet catastrophe. Let's take a look at the detail. What is a black body? And what is black body radiation? A black body is a physical body that is considered a perfect absorber of all incident electromagnetic radiation, regardless of frequency or angle of incidence. Black bodies do not just absorb energy though, when they are in thermal equilibrium, that is, in constant temperature, they also emit electromagnetic radiation known as blackbody radiation. This blackbody radiation can be analysed using a blackbody radiation curve, which will be explored in depth shortly. Proximate black bodies? Black bodies are theoretical objects and do not exist in reality, as most objects have been noted to very minutely reflect incoming electromagnetic radiation making them non-perfect absorbers. Instead, we look at approximate black bodies. Approximate black bodies emit energy at a fraction, called the emissivity, of theoretical black body energy levels. By definition, a black body in thermal equilibrium has an emissivity of 1.0. All objects that absorb and emit electromagnetic radiation is to some degree an approximate black body, just like the human body. However, we like considering high temperature objects such as stars as they emit electromagnetism in the visible range and have an emissivity close to 0.99. The study of black bodies is important as it can help us gain insight into the potential remnants of the Big Bang, known as the cosmic background radiation, the relationship between colour and temperature in stars, black holes, and in the industrial, industrial creation of near black materials. Is a blackbody radiation curve. As briefly mentioned previously, as we can see, the horizontal x-axis corresponds to wavelength and the vertical y-axis corresponds to light intensity, which is sometimes also defined as power density or spectral radiance. The peak of the graph, as well as the area under the graph, increases as the temperature of the body being analysed increases. In the case of our sun, most of the blackbody radiation falls into the visible spectrum, which is why we see the sun as a glowing mass. German physicist Wilhelm Wien studied the wavelength or frequency distribution of blackbody radiation in the 1890s using an oven with a small hole called a blackbody cavity. Any radiation that had entered the small hole was scattered and reflected from the inner walls of the oven slash cavity so often that nearly all incoming radiation is absorbed and the chance of some of it finding its way out of the hole again can be made exceedingly small. The radiation coming out of this hole is then very close to the equilibrium blackbody electromagnetic radiation, corresponding to the oven temperature. The law can often be seen in the form lambda max equals b on t, where b is Wien's displacement constant equal to 2.898 times 10 to the power of negative 3 meters kelvin, T is the temperature of the approximate black body in kelvins, and lambda corresponds to the wavelength in meters at which the maximum intensity slash radiative energy can be absorbed. Observe. Note that the distribution depends not on the material, but only on temperature, with the particular wavelength that is emitted with maximum intensity shifting left as temperature increases. We will revisit this formula at the end of the video when we tackle a practice summative question. Applications of Wien's law include determining the temperature of celestial objects based on its peak wavelength, predicting the peak of the blackbody bell curve, and thus predicting the type of EMR an object may be emitting, and in the study of the cosmic background radiation. Historical misconceptions and the violation of conservation of energy. The math of classical physics, most notably the Riley Jeans law, predicted that the intensity would continue to increase as the wavelength decreases, or at a higher frequency as frequency is inversely proportional to wavelength, and become infinitely large as the wavelength approaches zero. This prediction was based on analysis that was conducted on two assumptions. 
Energy emitted by a black body is equal at all frequencies and only proportional to temperature, and that particles were more likely to oscillate as the frequency increases or the wavelength decreases. Of course, this can't be true, because this is a direct contradiction of the law of conservation of energy. Energy emitted cannot be infinitely larger than the initial energy absorbed. Also, predictions suggested that every time you use the oven, you would get blasted with UV radiation, which in fact does not occur in reality. Although the Riley genes law was still a useful tool because it agreed with experimental results at large wavelengths or low frequencies, it began to show dramatic inconsistencies at short wavelengths or high frequencies. This classical mathematical prediction was thus denoted the ultraviolet catastrophe. As we said, Max Planck solved this problem, and he did so by introducing a concept called quantization. Planck's postulate stated that, number one, energy of oscillators in the black body is quantized into discrete packets of energy called photons, each with energy E equals to nhf, where f is the frequency of oscillation of the charges, h is a constant, and n is an integer number. Number two, Electrons emit a photon with E equals to HF when the excited electron moves from a higher quantum state back down to ground state. And number three, for oscillators oscillating with high frequency, the quantum states are far apart on the energy diagram. Charge has to experience a huge energy change and statistically this happens rarely. Hence, changes in quantum states are less likely to occur to oscillators with high frequency. So high frequency emit photons emitted are rare. Planck's law resolved the ultraviolet catastrophe by stating that, for a blackbody radiator, the average energy radiated per quantized energy state is the state's energy times the probability that it's actually occupied. For very high energy quanta, the probability of occupation approaches zero. This prevents the infinite energy prediction of the discredited classical law. It gives a way for arbitrarily high energies not to be radiated. On a microscopic level, particles in the black body can absorb energy from the incoming electromagnetic radiation from an external source. When a particle absorbs this energy, this energy is converted to kinetic energy, and the particle starts to oscillate. If the particle is charged, then it converts its kinetic energy back into electromagnetic radiation, as an accelerating charge particle produces EMR. The frequency of the emitted radiation will be proportional to the frequency that the particle is oscillating at, and would rarely be at an extremely high or low value, which is why the frequency of the emitted radiation usually falls into the middle portion of the blackbody radiation curve. Now let's look at a set of questions to summarize what we learned. Section 1. Question 1. What does the blackbody radiation distribution depend on? As we assess our options, we can immediately notice that option B is correct. This is because the other options refer to the type of material, and we know because of Wine's law and the displacement of the graph that the distribution of blackbody radiation is only dependent on temperature. Question 2a. Identify the peak wavelength of the comet. Although it seems that the peak wavelength is at 3000 angstrom, this peak is actually an emission peak from a nebula that the comet is likely travelling through. If we trace a bell curve trend, which is common to blackbody radiation, we can interpret the peak wavelength at 5200 angstrom. Consider the experimental data gathered by European Southern Observatory above. Calculate the temperature in Celsius of the comet Hyokutake. So the first thing we do is we use the wavelength which we determined from part A and we also write down our Wine's displacement constant. And here we have our Wine's law, where we have B over T. We then rearrange so that T becomes our subject, and we have B over wavelength max. We substitute the values which we have determined above, and we will get 5,573 5, Kelvin. Now, the question specifically asks for Celsius, so all we have to do is minus 273.15, and we get 5,299.85 degrees Celsius.
Question three, explain how the analysis of blackbody radiation curves contributed to the development of the concept of energy quantization. Blackbodies are idealized objects that are considered perfect absorbers of electromagnetic radiation and also emit electromagnetic radiation called blackbody radiation, depending on its temperature. In the 19th century, theoretical physicists and mathematicians used classical laws of thermodynamics to derive an equation to predict the distribution of blackbody radiation. Of these was Riley Jeans's law. However, the predictions of these mathematical models did not correlate with the emerging experimental data. Although it worked for large wavelengths, for shorter wavelengths, it predicted that the intensity would extend infinitely upwards, which contra contradicted laws of conservation of energy, as energy output could not be infinitely greater than initial absorbed in energy. Max Planck's idea of quantized energy helped reconcile experimental data and mathematics by theorizing that of the electromagnetic radiation emitted as discrete energy packets called photons, high energy EMR would be emitted rarely. This thus explained the dip in the UV spectrum observed when analyzing black bodies. Thus, the reconciliation between experimental data and theory allowed the quantization of energy to gain traction. Thank you.